Joining us now for this week's ETF report brought to you by Invesco QQQ is Todd Rosenbluth, Vetify Head of Research. Todd, it's great to see you again. So certainly more and more traders trying to bet against tech stocks. Or was the thought out there that maybe the valuations look a little bit more attractive at this point in tech, but maybe we have more uh, downside uh, risk ahead of us here? Well, that's the unknown right now. We've seen a lot of money going in and a lot of interest into the short version of QQQ, the Invesco QQQ ETF. That's got growth stocks. Um, you mentioned technology ones, but also Amazon, uh, companies like Alphabet that are in there. There's a lot of pessimism about the technology and the growth oriented sector heading into 2023. But there's also been strong interest into TQQQ, which is a three times leveraged pro shares ETF. So investors are looking to bet either for or against the technology sector in, in general because there's so much uncertainty and this has been a down year and there's gains to be had for investors on both the long or the short term if you have a very short time horizon. The longer that time horizon, the more at risk you take with these leverage and inverse ETFs. And Todd, talk about what you're seeing in terms of the inflow of funds for some of these inverse uh, ETFs and some of the leveraged ones. Yeah, we're seeing really strong interest in this. Uh, and on our Vetify platform, there's interest in getting to know these products, understanding what you get, the exposure, but also understanding the, the risks tied to that leverage. So this year, which we've had a down year for the equity markets, uh, down year for growth investing through the NASDAQ 100 indexes, investors are willing to take that risk on uh, to go in favor long for that leverage ETFs or to go short. We've also seen a lot of interest in, you touched on semiconductors in the prior segment, a lot of people who are willing to bet, and that's the key word here, bet, on the short-term price movements of the semiconductor industry, both long and short this year. Todd, talk a little bit more about the risk, because I think when some day traders or traders, when they see some, uh, in terms of outperformance, they get all excited, then they put too much money into these leverage or inverse ETFs. Talk to us a little bit more about the risk associated with this, because these are very supersized bets that people are making. That's right. So unlike traditional uh, ETFs, either they're index-based or actively managed ETFs, these are really intended for the very short time horizon. The longer that you are there, the greater the risk that's that's there. You Basically, if you're at a casino and you're putting money at the table and you're leaving it on for the next hand. Now, I'm not equating using leverage and inverse ETFs intentionally as gambling, but you have to think about it. The longer that you stay there, the more risks that are involved. These are best used from an extremely tactical perspective, a day or two or three. Better if you actually have long exposure to the other side of the trade and you're hedging that. But if you think about this relative to actively managed ETFs, which have been gaining traction in 2022, we're seeing the investors getting the benefit of that stock picking and skill selection from the management team, a management fund like the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF, JEPI. It owns equities and it uses options to be able to enhance the income perspective. So you get a much different experience than you would if you were using options alone in a leverage or inverse perspective. So JEPI has held up better than the broader marketplace because of that income component. And it's one of the trends that we've identified at Vetify in 2022. So Todd, how should people think about whether they should choose active versus passively investing in ETFs? And, and if you could, I also wanted to get your comment on, on Kathy Wood's uh, 21 shares, trying to list once again for this spot Bitcoin ETF and the SEC having none of it, delaying again that decision till January. I want to get your feelings also on some of the potential perhaps for these, uh, these Bitcoin spot ETFs. Sure. So let's touch on the active management component. This has been actually a very good year for active management within both the equity and fixed income space. We've seen fixed in active fixed income ETFs. Some of them outperform the broader ag, the iShares aggregate bond ETF, AGG. Uh, we, we at Vetify put out a piece that looked at some of those core bond products like Fidelity Total Bond ETF, FBND. Uh, we saw strong interest in that. We've seen TOT. 
ADL, which is a spider ETF that has outperformed the ag this year. It's held up better. It's still lost money. So you can make uh, money through an actively managed fixed income ETF, get the benefits of the uh, security selection without having to take on the same level of risk. And we're showing TOTL, which is from State Street. This is a product that's sub-advised by Double Line experienced management team really held up better than the broader marketplace by using security selection and interest rate management uh, to be able to deliver those returns. We touched on real quick about the ARC product. ARC is, again, the latest firm to be awaiting approval for a spot Bitcoin ETF. The SEC continues to have concerns about risks related to Bitcoin from a fraud perspective, not specific to ARC. This has been happening across the broader industry. So it's certainly going to be until 2023 and perhaps even later before we get a spot Bitcoin ETF. But investors can get exposure to Bitcoin futures based ETFs with an ETF like BITO, which is from ProShares, which is, again, it's under it's performed quite poorly because this Bitcoin marketplace is down. But investors have stayed relatively right. loyal to BITO.